Hey everyone, Chris here. I'm going to talk today uh, about something I don't know a whole lot about, but that's not going to stop me from talking about it. So what I'm going to talk about is the FIRE movement. Uh, uh, financial independence, retire early, and uh, I'm late to the game on this one. I've, as I started to research my own retirement and begin planning for that um, and take it a little more seriously, I stumbled onto this. Uh, the, 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 there was such a thing as the fire movement, and I guess it sounds great. Uh, financial independence for sure sounds great. The retirement early part is kind of the where I get hung up a little bit, and I'm not when, when I start to think about it a little more closely. I'm not sure it's something I would even advocate for to anyone as a as a movement type of thing right i think if a person is going to retire early um that's clearly a personal decision but i'm not even sure what retirement means anymore necessarily right so if if i look at some of the fundamental tenets um well so let's so let's just talk about financial independence i think that's something everybody can agree with and i think that's a value a value proposition that you should teach in the home, right? It starts with telling your kids that financial independence is a goal and it's a goal that you can start immediately with your first job. And a large part of it has to do with how you, how you view and use debt um, and how you train yourself to behave as a saver, right? I don't know that uh, the financial independence part of the equation involves much more than that, right? Uh, prudent saving and avoidance of debt. If you can, if you can nail those two things down from a very early age, chances are you're going to be okay, right? And, and th those are uh, those are aspirational goals, and I think those are values that should be taught at the family level. The retire early seems like those were a couple of words that might have been thrown on just to create a word called fire, right? I think uh, it has no place. It, ha it has, certainly doesn't have, it doesn't seem like it would have a lot of meaning to somebody who's 21 years old or even 30 years old and hasn't already developed the financial independent skill set necessary to retire early if in fact they were even, even intended to retire early, whatever that means. I think if they intended to uh, quit their crappy old job, which I'll quote the guy from Heritage Wealth, um, and, and become travel correspondents or, <clears throat> you know, influencers and generate revenues that way, that's not retirement. That's simply switching gears, right, and, and moving into a different line of business. So uh, what are the things that I do admire about members of the FIRE movement when I read some of their work or, or, or hear what they have to say is that there is absolutely, there seems to be a minimalist uh, component to a lot of FIRE movement uh advocates or participants and i think minimalism is also a value that should be set within the family context right you can start from a very early age the idea to to minimize minimize your use of things uh to view the world through a minimal lens right that uh try to consume less don't uh certainly don't get into this uh, competition with the joneses next door to to outdo others simply for social status or other things that might be gained by buying or purchasing or acquiring things so i think minimalism is absolutely something that i can get behind and it's a core value that should be taught at a very early age the world world could be a better place for it could also have some economic consequences associated with that if we see all consumers behave a little bit differently. That's probably another discussion for another video. And then the uh, the thing that strikes me that is missing from the equation as, as part of the equation is a focus on skill relevance. Because if I'm talking to somebody who's in their 20s or 30s even, and I'm talking about retiring early, but I'm not talking about maintaining skill relevance for them knowing what that's going to take over time, uh, I think that's misleading and dangerous and potentially setting them up for failure, right? Somebody's looking at to retire at 35 years old, have no idea what the decade ahead of them may bring, and they could find themselves needing to get back into a workforce at age 45, 50, 55, and learn a whole new set of skills. And over the course of a couple of decades, the landscape for the work environment corporate environments uh, and the tools that these organizations use could have changed significantly and substantially in a way that would impact 
and potentially degrade their financial independence, right? So this concept of uh, fire as it is, it's just not something that makes, doesn't resonate with me one tiny bit. I, you know, I look forward to a, a day of, I look forward to retirement, but I'm not sure what that means. I'm not even sure what that means for me. And I think that I would still want, if there was any chance that I would need to be employed, skill relevance and maintaining relevant skill sets would be on my mind all the time. In fact, that's a huge, huge part of why I'm uh, producing any YouTube videos at all is so that I can sharpen some skill sets around video production. So that's something that I know how to do, that I'm comfortable creating content for whether it's good or it's bad, uh, having a conversation with a camera, which is not particularly, uh, you know, it's hard to get feedback from a camera. But so these are skills that at some point down the road, I might be able to leverage in some other work capacity. And so I think that the fire movement as it is just, it falls down for me, right? And it's not because I'm, I'm not a fan of some of uh, what they're trying to do, but I think it really is, it's the retirement early part that just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, and when I read a lot of the, what people are saying, a lot of the bloggers, it doesn't seem like they're actually retired. So I'm not sure what they're talking about. And if I was, if I was coaching or counseling a young person, trying to help them plan out what their future would look like. It certainly wouldn't involve retiring early. Uh, just the, the risks that an individual can face, financial, health, otherwise for themselves or their family or their extended group of friends that they care enough about to take action on behalf of, right? Um, yeah, I think, you know, as a minimalist, you're trying to reduce your footprint, reduce your expenses and all of that. But that's great up until the point where, you wish that you could help a person who's in drastic need of help um, and you have reduced yourself to the point where you're not able to do that. So, um, why? Well, and maybe, you know, I'm definitely open to feedback. I'm just, I'm gonna maybe take some criticism on this one, but I'm okay with that, right? I think uh, we're shortchanging folks when we talk right about early retirement. We're not talking about making sure that they understand that the future for them involves maintaining uh, relevant skill sets continuously, right? And so the the best thing that they can do for themselves is learn how to learn, do that quickly, gain mastery. And if we talk about you know Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours to master a thing, what is it that a human can do to shorten or compress that, right? So there's the there's the magic recipe. If if you can figure out a way for a person to master things faster, more quickly so that they can engage in the workforce uh, more to more, you know, uh, effectively and, and with a, a greater level of agility, that's a positive thing. But just saying that, hey, at some point you'll hit a financial level of independence that will allow you to retire early and then do whatever that means. Because if that means sitting on a, a, you know, a half a billion dollar yacht traveling the world, that's, that's quite a stretch. If it means living in a, a shack down by the the river on a parcel of land that your grandpa gave you, well, that's not too aspirational. Well, that might be pretty easy to achieve, but it might not be the most satisfying existence that you've ever had. And I'd also, you know, put out there that this idea of financial independence and retiring early, minimalism, um, you know, that's has its roots that go way back. And if you look, uh, there was a guy who came up to Alaska years ago. His name's Dick Prinicky. I'll put a link to a video about him in the notes on this on this show here. Uh, and he, you know, he he was a guy who f went out to the middle of nowhere, lived with just some hand tools that he brought. And this was back in the 50s, I think. Built cabins, subsisted off the land. So a completely minimalist point of view. Financial independence wasn't what it was about for him. I think he was definitely looking for other things in his life. And, he, and as it turns out, he wasn't 100% financially independent because as it turns out, a modern man does require even just some basics, uh, you know, salt, sugar, um, some basic inputs, nails, if you're going to build a thing. Um, so anyway, I kind of gotten off track. But yeah, uh, I am new to the FIRE movement. I haven't given it a lot of thought. I've, I've read some uh, blogs, watched some videos. 
uh, but it doesn't it doesn't resonate with me. It's a little confusing, and I think it gets halfway to the mark with the financial independence, which I 100% think is is a core value that you should be teaching to your children, and, and in a practical way, walking them through what that means. Credit uh, credit card avoidance, debt avoidance, right? Really carefully considering their educational opportunities through the lens of finance, right? What is this going to cost you? What is the return on this college education that we're about to invest in, right? That's, that's probably the first real introduction that they could have to the long lasting impacts of taking on debt. Um, and a lot of people just don't, don't put nearly the thought that they should into that, and my, myself included. Um, luckily, when I went to college as an undergrad, it was at the, a very cheap university and I cash flowed it because it never even occurred to me that I shouldn't do that, right? I was paying thousands of dollars, not tens of thousands of dollars for the education, so it wasn't such a stretch. Um, today, I've got a, a daughter, and she's looking at college, and I would love nothing more than for her to go and get a, 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 a medical degree, right? Whether it's uh, in psychiatry or whatever she wants. And when I look at the cost of that, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy, right? So obviously a lot of financial planning would have to go into that for us to make that happen for her if she wants to choose that. I'd be surprised if she does. Um, but it starts with us today having those conversations about what's it going to take for her to achieve any of these types of goals, right? Um, so that's it. Yeah, as always, uh, thanks for watching. If you have an opinion or would like to shred what I just said, please put it in the comments. Downvote me if you like. I think the, the AI algorithms may even look favorably on that in some ways. Who knows? I'm okay with that. But uh, take care. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.